Okay guys, welcome back to Sierra Railroad Locations. I am hiking the Angels Branch right now again. I promised I'd be back, and uh, thankfully it wasn't uh, too much later than my last video on the Angels Branch. We are just above the Carson Hill Mine, and I actually had to do a bit of backtracking to get on the right-of-way because as you can see, back there is a barbed wire fence. Uh, there were some uh, threatening signs on the fence, so I figured, you know what, I'll try and go around it um, rather than climb over it because I don't, I don't want to get into trouble here. So, anyway, we are walking away from Angel's Camp. We are walking westbound toward New Maloney's Reservoir, which was the former Stanislaus River Canyon. Uh, I'm really glad that that fence line didn't extend too far because I wouldn't have been able to walk the right-of-way if it did. As you can see in this area, it's pretty much intact. It's just very overgrown. Um, a little bit of the land has slid downhill a little bit, as you can see right here. Uh, there are several fallen trees back there near the end of the fence line. There was one. Anyway, like I said, we are just above the Carson Hill Mine and Carson Hill. The right-of-way is uh, today somewhat difficult to see. Uh, there are so many houses not too many. Carson Hill only uh, has a few full-time residents these days, but um, it, it was a little bit difficult to make out. Luckily, I had a, a map of the Angels Branch that goes over current day maps, and I was able to find it. Uh, I don't believe very many people have walked this part of the right-of-way in many, many decades. It has been nearly 80 years since the last train ran on the Angels Branch. About uh, midway through 1935, they finished uh, pulling up the rails. And uh, it's 2014 now. We're less than a year away from the 80th anniversary of the end of service on the Angels Branch. So this is a chance of a lifetime to see this right of way. Not many people visit the Angels Branch anymore. Most of this is surprisingly intact. It's not like you can build a whole lot of property on a narrow shelf like this. It's probably about 15 or 20 feet wide not exactly the best place for a house. We are, we are pretty high above the roadway. Matter of fact, you can kind of see it down there. I'm not going to try and show you on the camera. You can, it's hard to see as it is, but yeah. That looks like a severely charred and corroded tie. More than likely it is. You can see more of the right-of-way is clear uh, heading back to the reservoir. Approaching a small cut here. And this part of my hike uh, goes from Carson Hill uh, to the last place that uh, I stopped on my previous hike. We uh, hiked on the section where we walked to Gee Whiz Point. 
uh, last, well, not last year, earlier this year, uh, the, the, the part of the video where we were walking past Gee Whiz Point, uh, I'm going to be hiking all the way back there, so my hike kind of comes full circle. Grade here is fairly consistent. This would be a fantastic railroad to rebuild. Um, talking to you uh, millionaires out there who are interested in railroads. Unfortunately, you don't meet a lot of those guys. And we're, we're entering a, a little bit of a larger cut. It looks like they had a lot of room uh, for trains to pass through this one. Some of the cuts on the Angels Branch were said to be on such tight curves that almost none of the locomotives could get through them without scraping dirt off the rock walls. Even the number 30 uh, and the Shays, they had a hard time uh, traversing the rails in the cuts, particularly Table Mountain Cut, which I believe was on a 29 degree curve, which is very sharp. I'd say we're on about a half percent to one percent grade going uphill. The unfortunate part about this section of right-of-way, there's not too many, there weren't too many industries on this part of the line between Carson Hill and uh, the reservoir. The only notice, or the only, um, uh, the only notable portion of the right-of-way between Carson Hill and the reservoir, really, was the uh, Jeewas Point, which I've already showed you. So I really don't have a lot of commentary on this section of right-of-way. Oh, there's a buck up there. Well, if you want to get close to nature, here's where to do it. Just mind your step. Keep away from the poison ivy and... I'm sorry, poison oak. This is California. Keep away from the poison oak and the barbed wire. It should be coming close to the roadway again pretty soon. Because the, the road crosses the right-of-way before I get back to that point where I ended my last hike. Yeah, see the, the road is down there. So we're not too far. The road is coming up higher, meeting the right-of-way, and then we'll have to cross the highway to get back to where I ended the last hike. But this is pretty scenic. Maybe it's just my interest in the railroad itself, but I'd say this is fairly scenic views, and a short railroad would be more, would more than make me happy. You know, have a short ride on a railroad through Calaveras County would be perfect. Now, I realize that the chances of a railroad being rebuilt in Calaveras County are very, very slim. The best you're going to get really is probably a live steam railroad but I don't see it getting much bigger than that without a huge amount of funding. The big problem is not necessarily specific private landowners, but it's government properties, especially those like the Carson Hill Mine. That fence line back there, if that is mine property, it'll be very difficult to obtain for a railroad. And there's a little saying about not in my backyard. I'm pretty sure a lot of the people, the very few people who live in Angels Camp and Carson Hill may not want to have a railroad in their backyard. Unfortunately, not everybody sees it the rail fans way. But at least we can walk it. It's still here to walk. Just watch your step.
The last car just went around the hill. It got very quiet. I'm just gonna shut up for a second. Now just imagine the sound of a steam locomotive running through the hills here. And as you can see, this portion of right-of-way is far away from most public property. Uh, what I mean is homeowners' properties. The farther away a railroad is from people, the happier they seem to be. As you can see, we're rounding the last few curves before we get to that crossing of the highway I mentioned. And we're coming to another relatively large cut here. Now, I have to say, I'm not usually one for hiking, but if it has to do with the railroad, I'll live through it. Yeah, really nice and cool in here. If you clean this up, you put track back here and you ran a train through it, it'd be one heck of a ride. Unfortunately, you, the section of right of way that goes through Gee Whiz Point is owned by the Irrigation District, which by extension is owned by the US government. So unfortunately, a train will never again see the hills of Gee Whiz Point. Eh, really, it's really sad, but it's the unfortunate reality. But even so, this, like I said, this section of right-of-way is very much intact. It's very much secluded. You only have the occasional truck engine going in the in the background, but uh, other than that, it's a very nice ride. It just needs some, uh, just needs a little uh, bit of garden care, is all. Well, we just came through another cut here. For some reason there was a barricade in the right-of-way. I have no idea why. And it was definitely not a landslide. It was too neatly shaped to be a landslide, so that ain't it. That isn't it. And I just noticed something. Uh, compared to my previous hikes on the Angels Branch, I have not seen any railroad artifacts whatsoever, except for the occasional tie. But I mean like spikes and tie plates. I understand that the Angels Branch was ripped up in order to retrieve some of the railroad's investment, sell it for scrap or whatever. But uh, even still, I have seen spikes and tie plates thrown aside. Speaking of which, here's a, uh, another tie. You can see it a little bit there. I don't see any spike holes, but after about 80 years of being in the ground, I imagine there wouldn't be much uh, wood still intact other than what you see. So you might be able to tell that I've uh, uncovered a bit more of the tie. The full thing is intact in the ground. It's hard to make out where the spike holes were and where the tie plates went, especially on the camera, but 
it's definitely a tie. All right, let's continue on with the hike. We're coming up to a little fence here, so I'm going to have to get over that. Yeah, we're getting closer to the road here. And closer to the fence. Continuing onward toward the highway crossing. Looks like the remains of more ties charred in the ground. I don't know if anybody spotted that. But we're coming up on the highway crossing about here. Matter of fact, looks like the highway cut through the right of way because it ends here. Uh, before I go and find a way across the highway, which I just found out is gonna be a little difficult to do without some backtracking, would you just look at this view? Even though the highway's here and it, it, you know the cars create a little bit of traffic noise, it's uh, the highway is not very busy and the scenery is still here. Scenic Highway 49 definitely works its way around. Okay, well, we're back on the right-of-way. Here's another cut. There's something interesting uh, went on back there. The, uh, to make room for the highway, they actually scraped part of the, uh, the hillside clean away. I thought the road would have made a cut, but it didn't look like it. And it looks here the right-of-way drops off. It looks like there was a trestle here. I would not be surprised. There were some 30 trestles or so on the Angels Branch, so we're going to have to walk down and up. Looks like a somewhat of a long one, too. Yeah, but anyway, from here I know where I'm going. So... Yeah, just around the hillside over there is where I ended the last hike. At a uh, cut just around the hill from here. Yeah, I wonder if there are any pictures of the trestle that were here. If there aren't any more, more than likely there would have been before the two fires that destroyed uh, the Jamestown general offices. Sorry if the camera's a little shaky, it's not exactly paved road where I'm walking. This hike is actually getting to be pretty tiring. I uh, almost regret, well, I guess at this point I do regret not having brought something to drink. Not to mention the long hike back up the hill, which won't be on the right of way since it's going to be a little difficult to get back onto, so... Yeah, I figure I'll just take the road. Apparently there has been some uh, cattle going down this way, be it cows or horses. Probably horseback riders. Another cut. Uh, 
And it looks like a, another tie. See the spike holes? This one's actually in pretty decent shape. Must have been a newer one before the railroad closed. Really gotta say, a lot of people back then, 1935, 1940s, the depression was going on. Not a lot of people had time to care about the railroad, but they did lose something. And now a lot of us feel it more, now more than ever. The railroad's gone, there's very little chance of it coming back. Yeah, the barbed wire fence is starting to come up. I really got to say, the one thing that's even more disappointing than the railroad's uh, non-existence today, that reservoir destroyed a good historic portion of the Sierra Railway's Angels Branch right-of-way in the Stanislaus River Canyon. Really have to say that, at the very least. And that really hurts me because even if the water level does reach low points like it is now, it destroys all the land underneath it. And not only does it destroy it, but it, 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 it's, it loses its fertility, let's put it that way. After a drought, you see the lowest level of the uh, you see the ground level, the former ground level that was covered with water for so many years, completely dried up. As a matter of fact, you can see what I'm talking about right down there. It's destroyed. I really damned this reservoir. No pun intended. Okay, we're getting a little closer to where I ended the hike last time. And I am seeing a lot of gravel here. And it's, the thing about this is, it's not, it's not gravel that's used current day. Gravel that's used today is designed to lock together, it has sharp edges. And that's what they use on railroads today, so that they keep the track from moving from under the locomotive. This is river rock. That is typical of gravel and ballast used on the railroad decades ago. As a matter of fact, I just found an artifact from the railroad. Can anybody see it? Yeah, it's a track bolt. It's been cut off. Not sure I want to take that one back with me because look what it's right next to. Big pile of dried cow dung or horse dung, either one. I think I'll just leave that one there. I've got plenty of other cut up track bolts from the Angels Branch anyway, which I still need to organize. Anyway, so this is likely ballast that was left here uh, when the railroad was pulled up. This river rock ballast was very, very low grade cheap stuff. It did not lock together very well. It was just something to put on the track to make the people happy. Um, so they couldn't say they were riding on unballasted track. Nevertheless, it was very cheap. It was very inefficient as far as ballast goes which is why the railroad probably didn't bother to pull it up some railroads do reuse gravel usually only class ones though short lines no point This section is a lot longer than I thought it was. Alright, it's a little bright to see, but uh, see the, the water level is really dropping. It's at least 150 feet or more down from the high water mark. So, there's a good chance we'll uncover quite a bit of 
railroad history in this next year. I do have to say though, it would be really nice to have a little bit of cool rain. This hike is turning out to be a lot longer than I thought it would be. Which is nice because it's area that neither I nor too many other people have seen in the last 80 years. But I'm also kind of tired, if you understand. So, some of my older Sierra Railway friends, Sierra Railway fans, um, probably have not so much fun doing this. Okay guys, uh, you may think I'm just looking at some random piece of scrap metal. However, the age of the metal and the fact that there's concrete filling in it makes me curious if this is one of the steel piers for the Stanislaus River Bridge that crossed the Stanislaus River between the two sets of switch bags. This looks like one of them. It's long enough. It looks about the right size. There are riveted panels on it. It really does look like it. I saw another section of steel lying over there. I can't confirm it, but it is very suspicious. If I had a tape measure, I'd measure it and see if it's, um, see if it's about the same as the measurements and drawings of the bridge. Well, anyway, um, so I guess I've walked about three quarters of a mile or to a mile from the highway on this section of the right of way to find this. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to count it off the top of my head. There are five. There are five panels, five steel panels riveted together with concrete filling on both ends. Uh, looking at the rust holes, the, the corrosion on the steel doesn't look like it's completely um, it, it looks like it's uh, a little hollow with concrete on both ends um, but this is consistent with uh, the steel piers on the Angels Branch uh, Stanislaus River Bridge I don't understand why they would be here but something else uh, that is um, something else I have to say those steel piers were not sited with the rest of the concrete piers when the drought in the 1990s lowered the water level down to about 10 to 20 percent capacity. You could see the concrete piers, but the steel piers were gone. These very well could be those steel piers. Well, anyway, I thought that was something interesting, so let's continue. I think we're coming close to that fence line where I'm going to stop this portion of my hike today. I see a cut up here, and I know I've walked more than far enough to find it. So, it should be coming up pretty quick. Hopefully so, because I'm, I'm about ready to, come, uh, to head back. slightly larger cut than the ones I've been seeing. So this 
very well could be it. Another tie. That wooden fence post right there. Four spike holes. like this is where I'm going to end my hike so thank you guys again for coming with me on another hike on the Angels Branch. It may not look like too much anymore but if you can just imagine the little Sierra Railway number 30 with four or five cars chugging up the grade here on these two to between two and four percent grades and imagine the reservoir not being there just just imagine it it would be one heck of a train ride. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.